So first of all, I want to talk about my passions. My passion is actually about children. I really like. I really enjoy children. Um, I am really passionate about kids in between the ages of seven to thirteen, pretty much from fourth grade to uh, at the end of the middle school. I really like the way they think and how can I use their reasoning to help them become high performance athletes for a chance of scholarships or become professional players if they want to. Uh, what goes into my decision, I know that the assignment uh, the professor asked us to shoot for the sky pretty much, to shoot for the stars, to shoot for a really high position of somebody. But instead I'd rather picking someone quite different, someone that I think is going to help me better to understand the kind of leadership that I'm looking for. So I pick uh, an elementary teacher, which is her, call, her name is Christina, uh, to help me understand a little bit the children's behavior. She is uh, a fifth grader um, uh, teacher, or she was a fifth grader teacher. She also used to teach uh, uh, volleyball. She was the main coach of the volleyball team of the high school. She, was, she is right now a teacher for other teachers, teaching, helping them with methods and strategies how to teach children. Uh, and she also helps a nonprofit organization uh, to maximize their, uh, their potential and help as much as, as much people and schools as they can. So I pretty much picked her because I, she it's a leader for really a, a bunch of different groups of people. For example, she was a leader for children. Uh, she was a leader for teenagers uh, in sports. Uh, she, was, she, she is right now a, a leader for college students that help her um, in their goals of the nonprofit. And she also is a leader for teachers so she has four main groups of different ages of um, people that she leads accordingly in different ways so that concludes my question number one and i'm gonna go ahead and start answering question number two what is my perception about the leader in the interview so she was very humble at the beginning you know she didn't really consider herself as a leader until I started talking, uh, you know, that she encourages other people, she improves other people to be better. Um, whenever, so at the beginning she started like crossing her arms, you know, her, her shoulders were close together, kind of like showing kind of like defensive way uh, to communicate. While I started explaining how she was a good leader, she started like loosening up a little bit and speaking more fluently. Um... So the third topic is the key topics about leadership that we talk about. So first I asked her to define me what was leadership for her. And she, she came up with three main skills that she thinks for her role are, they were very important. As leader of all the groups, just in summarize. The first one would be amazing communication skills. Uh, when you're working with children or adults or anybody, it's really important to understand, you know, what's what's the point, what you're trying to get, uh, what are you trying to get other people to do. So communication skills is probably key. Adaptability is something that she said was pretty much also very important because, for example, if you're working with kids, you might come to realize, and you know, they're not really enjoying the topic or or they're not really understanding, or they just don't feel like doing anything that day. So, you know, you have to adapt and do something in order to leave the day without them not learning something, you know. Especially that applies for all uh, every group. So, it's really important. And she also mentioned that relation building is key, very important for leadership, at least for her leadership and definition because she uses the relations to the relationships to communicate better to create a bond and in using that bond you can understand what the needs are of your f followers uh in base of that 
uh, need, you can help them to evolve, to become a better person. And also very important, I talk about, you know, that in leadership we use conflict uh, because uh, without conflict, pretty much there would be no leaders or at least no good leaders. There would be just one person, as the example the professor said before in class. So, yes, indeed, she, um, when she was, uh, the example was when she was in fifth grade, teaching fifth graders, uh, she used to use uh, conflict to create discussions so the kids could defend their topics and say why they were right and understand why they were wrong. Uh, and that way they could learn uh, in a very proactive way. Um, the four questions would be, the fourth question would be, what do you think about her leadership? I really think it was quite amazing, a leader. She was very humble. Uh, and her main focus was on servant leadership, which is making relations more important than herself you know she the, her main point is to be servant for her followers make sure the followers do everything she does everything she can so the follower can be the most beneficial about it you also learn as uh, with your followers because it's it's uh, you give and you receive information and that that helps you build your your leadership perspective and everything but she was pretty much a servant and she really liked to create conflict uh, control conflict to teach uh, in a better way um, one, one example that really uh, hit me was you know that she doesn't really she does not only use you know she does only teach what the program says you know um, or what the book says, but she tried to teach, you know, something else, something that kids won't really are going to learn in any other class. Something like how to communicate, you know, where you're communicating, where your shoulders have to look, uh, where your shoulders have to be facing, your shoulders have to be facing the person you're talking to, you know, you're, 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 you're not going to make eye contact all the time because it's going to become pretty creepy, but uh, eye contact from time to time is going to make the conversation more reliable and uh, you're going to become a better trusted person when you're speaking. Uh, and number five, the key statement that we talked that some really impacted me, we actually talked in class about it, is that she likes solving the problems pro proactively, not reactively. For example, if she looks that the, and the students are you know just losing interest in class or she just doesn't feel they're learning that much because you can just learn that much uh, and to a certain point she started doing dance breaks you know to encourage kids if you make a kid smile or laugh or just a regular person um uh, you lose they lose stress and and stress keep you away from learning uh, at least children. She was making sure that so she would go to other classes, lower grades, in order to uh, get to know the kids beforehand so they would want to go to her whenever the time was to get a fit and to get in fifth grade. So she was acting proactively so kids would be encouraged to learn with her. Which was pretty fascinating because, you know, uh, the last thing you want to do is go to school, pretty much. So, if you're looking forward to go to school, you're looking forward to this professor, you're looking forward to learn. So, if you're looking forward to learn, then your experience in school is going to be different. I think that's a pretty nice thing to work on. I think that's a really nice thing that everybody should be doing. And, in fact, that's what she's teaching to other teachers. Um, to do to encourage kids to go to their classes to, because it's fun and because it's fun people learn so pretty much what uh, Our professor is doing with this class uh, I really want to thank you uh, This has been a really powerful class because I've learned a lot because of this because I really want to go to class because I really want to have fun and learn because I think leadership from now this perspective it's a lot more fun rather than just theories thank you